before chapter Hare Krishna. So we'll start our session today by paying our obeisances to His Divine Grace Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, the founder Acharya for his God. So we are in our journey for chapter 16. And like we know, Bhagavad Gita has 18 chapters, of which we are in the last six chapter section, which falls into the Gyan Yuga. And uh, now we will be doing chapter 16. Chapter 16 title is The Divine and the Demonic Nature. And the it's a comparatively short chapter. It has around 24 verses um, overall. Um, now, this chapter, like the name says, you know, divine and demonic, both qualities, you know. So, um, Krishna is explaining in this chapter, you know, what are the qualities which define a divine personality and what are demonic characters, right? the qualities. So, um, for convenience, we have uh, divided it into four sections. Um, and today we'll try to cover all the sections. Um, and the first, uh, the, ch the chapter starts with Krishna explaining from verse one to three about divine qualities. Okay. And then from there on, once he explains about divine, you will see that from fourth verse, it's the, the focus is more on demonic. So four to eight, we learn about demonic qualities. 10 to 20 then, you know, uh, or 4 to 9 rather. And 10 to 20, we learn what are the activities of such demonic people, you know, and what are their consequences, means what are their results. Okay? And then in the end, uh, you know, Krishna as usual, uh, he gives us the solution as well, right, across the um, people. And in the last section, he gives, you know, that how to give up, right, giving up demonic tendency by following you know, and following scriptures. Okay. So, um, when we learn about this divine qualities, obviously, it goes by default that divine quality people are closer to Krishna, right? But demoniac are not, right? So, uh, let's say the situation of uh, a prison, yeah? Now, in prison, uh, we can say that there are two kinds of people, classes of people. One are the law abiders, you know, and the other were, uh, other section is the law breakers, right? So the law abiding prisoners are the one who are attempting to follow the rules and regulation of the prison. You know, why? Because they want to get out of the prison. Okay. So they understand that they are in prison and they want to work on these rules and regulations so that they can come out of it. But the other category of people are the law breakers. You know, they, they break the rule of the prison again and again. You know, why? Because they have got used to living there, you know, and they are, they have become kind of attached to that prison house, you know, and they want to stay there. For them, it doesn't matter, you know. So they want to continue that. So these are kind of law breakers, right? But we have to remember, similarly, uh, law abiders are the divine qualities. Right? Law breakers are the demonic, okay? But we have to remember why I'm comparing it to a prison is because we have to remember that we are in the prison. You know, even the people who are following, yeah, they are better than the demonic but they are still within this material world. They are still in prison, okay? And of course, we'll learn further now, um, uh, you know, the breakage of what are the divine characteristics and what are the demonic, yeah? And uh, of course, we are in Kaliuga and Krishna knows, right? So the focus is more on demonic uh, qualities, you know, that how uh, these people, what tendency they have, uh, you know, what attitude they have, you know, and quite various sections of this chapter, we will also see that we can easily correlate, you know, because when we hear about certain qualities, certain set, we'll see that, you know, uh, maybe we fall in this category also, that category also, and we can analyze, you know, that how these qualities are actually imbibed, right? 
So in the previous chapter, um, Krishna compared the interesting, the complex banyan tree, right? He described banyan tree as this material. But, you know, let's say the other way to look at this chapter is that um, that banyan tree, it gives fruits, right? Any tree gives fruits, right? Now, fruits can be of two kinds, again, good and bad. Right? The good fruits are the one which are like a very juicy, sweet, you know, tasty, right? And the bad fruit from the same tree are like, it might be really sour, you know, tangy and, you know, that kind. So, fruits are of two qualities, right? Similarly are these, you know, the fruits of this material world, right? The, the banyan tree which we are comparing, it can be either divine or demonic, okay? And when we talk about daivi sampada, yeah, that is Daivi means the divine qualities. Okay. Now, moving to the first shloka. So, you will see that, <clears throat> you know, first to three shlokas are together, yeah, combined. Now, there is a huge list of qualities which Krishna has at once given in, in these three shlokas. And these sum up around 26 qualifications, yeah, which are divine qualities. So 26 of them, so let's start, you know. So the Supreme Personality of God had said, fearlessness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, study of Vedas, austerity, simplicity, non-violence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fault-finding, compassion for all living entities, freedom from covetousness, gentleness, modesty, steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, cleanliness, and freedom from envy and from the passion for honor. These transcendental qualities, O son of Bharata, belong to godly men endowed with divine nature. Yeah, Krishna is summing up the whole thing in one Yeah, for us. So here, Prabhupada, in the purport, <clears throat> what he has done is, um, I think quite a lot of these qualities we discussed before as well, right? In 12th chapter, we discussed, you know, uh, the qualities of a deity. In 13th also, we discussed from Shloka 8 to 12, you know, um, how is the person who is in knowledge, Jnanam, right? That two J's we are. So the, some of these qualities we might have, we have, heard before already. Right? Now Prabhupada in his purport has described these divine qualities according to Varna and Ashram. Yeah? See, uh, we know that there are four Varnas. Which are the four Varnas? Chatur Varnam Maya Shrishtam. So fourth chapter Krishna already explained. Which are the four Varnas? Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaisya and Sudra. Perfect. And which are the four Ashramas? Brahmachari Ashram, Grahastha, Vanaprastha, Sanyasi. Okay, thank you. So, um, so, so, Varna and Ashrama, right? So, what uh, we are doing now is, Prabhupada has described these qualities according to Varna and Ashrama. So, what that means is, as per scriptures, some qualities of these need to be prominently present in a particular varna and ashram of human being. Okay. But that does not mean that all of these qualities should be only present in that varna and ashram. No. You know, this has to be present. These are divine qualities. But prominently, certain ashramas have prominent certain qualities. For example, let's start, you know. Um, say, first one is uh, fearlessness. Yeah. Now, this is prominently for sannyasis. Okay. Why? Because the first qualification a sannyasi should have is fearlessness. Because, see, they have to live alone, you know, without any support or guarantee of support, right? And they have to simply depend on the mercy of Krishna. You know, one must be fully convinced, you know, a sannyasi should be fully convinced that I am never alone. Krishna is there with me as super soul always. 
Krishna is there with me to protect me. Okay, so that that fearlessness is it needs to be there across everybody, all the varnas, ashramas, but prominently in a sannyas. Yeah. Similarly, the next characteristics is purification. Right. Same. You know, this is also um, again a prominent uh, quality for a sannyasi. Yeah. Mm. So for sannyasis, strictly any intimate relationship with women is forbidden. You know, there are two things. You know, position of wealth or opulence. And relationship with women. These are the two things which are forbidden for sannyasis. So there should be no sense gratification. Okay. So that's why, you know, this is one of the prominent character of a sannyasi. And then the third one also, cultivation of spiritual knowledge. See, sannyasis' life are meant for distributing knowledge to householders, to grahasthas, okay, and also others. Because who, especially because people have forgotten their real identity. So it's the, you know, sannyasi, they go door to door, you know, uh, to not exactly for the purpose of begging, but to see the householders and to awaken them for Krishna consciousness. So that's the thing. Okay. So now after that, some, um, you know, qualities like charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, all these are prominently for grahasthas. See, charity is meant for householders because um, householders are, you know, um, they are the earners, right? They earn their livelihood, right? So, and in purport, we see that Prabhupada especially highlighted charity should be given only to propagate Krishna consciousness, you know? Um, that is the charity mode of goodness. And in next chapters, we will learn even charity is done, that one thing, activity is done in three different modes. Mode of goodness, what kind of charity, mode of passion, mode of ignorance, okay? But anything, any charity done to spread Krishna consciousness is the charity in mode of goodness, okay? And next is self-control. Yes, we have learned a lot about controlling our senses, right? Then this is especially for grahasthas, again, prominently, you know? Um, because uh, grahasthas, they want to progress in their spiritual life. But at the same time, they are in an environment where it is very easy to lose that sense control, right? So we, uh, the, uh, he, they have to control, you know, even the sex life to beget children, you know, because, you know, uh, in the purport again, you know, we have seen this before also, that the children should be begot so that they can be made Krishna conscious. One, you know, Prabhupada says one can produce hundreds of children, you know, um, but not for sense pleasure, but with a mindset that, yes, I'll spread Krishna consciousness, you know, if it is for the purpose of Krishna consciousness, yeah. So without the purpose of serving Krishna, even that is out of control, yeah. And then uh, performance of sacrifice. Again, sacrifice is another item which is performed by the householders, by grahasthas. you know. Why? Because... Um, you know, the sacrifice needs money, right? You know, Grahastha is an ashram where the other ashrams are dependent. Sanyasa, you know, Brahmachari, and even Vanpras, you know. So they are dependent on Grahasthas. Okay. So, so these are the prominent ones for Grahastha. Next is study of Vedas. This is prominent for Brahmacharis. You know, those in order of Brahmacharya, they, they, this is their main, you know, Swadhyaya. It's reading the scriptures. And then comes austerity, simplicity, non-violence, truth. Uh, yeah, these are again for Vana Prasthas. Yeah. So um, for austerity, yes, for all the roles, all the classes, austerity has to be, right, in, in our life. But austerity specially meant for retired life, which is the Van Prastha. Why? Because, um, see, they have to learn to uh, be austerior, um, you know, a retired man from household life, they have to perform austerities of body, mind and tongue, you know, because they have to follow that. They cannot be, um, you know, they have to control their senses again, you know, uh, they have to practice that. That is tapasya, you know, without tapasya, we will not get liberation. Austerity is there in every class, yeah. So, and, um, you know, in the purport, we see how um, 
if uh, Prabhupada said that, say, if one lives for 100 years of life, how should they spend it? They should spend the first 25 years as brahmachari, which is student life. The next 25 years as householder life. The next 25 as vanaprastha, retired life. And then the last 25, renounced. Okay, that should that is how it should be. You know, that's why this Varanashrama system is set up. Right now, next is truthfulness. See, um, again, uh, we have gone through this, but one thing we have to, uh, one key thing from the purport is that um, one should truthfulness, as in one should not distort the truth for personal interest. You know, in Vedic literature, there are some difficult passages. You know, but the meaning, you know, it should not be distorted. That's how most of the commentators, why do we have Bhagavad Gita 700 commentaries on Bhagavad Gita? You know, because, you know, um, and why Prabhupada named this Bhagavad Gita as Bhagavad Gita as it is? You know, because the meaning should not be distorted. And that's why it is very, uh, you know, critical that we get this knowledge from authorized sampradaya, you know, from a spiritual master. You know, because Devotees are truthful. They are not diplomatic. You know, they are just as it is, like Prabhupada says. Yeah. And next is freedom from anger. Yes. You know, we krodha. Yeah. Krodha bhavati sammoha. Sammoha smriti vidham. So second chapter we learned how anger leads us to for our downfall. You know, and I heard somewhere, you know, anger is one letter short of danger. So we have to be careful, you know, because once we get angry, the whole body gets polluted. And why do we get anger? Because it is actually anger is a product of passion. We are passionate about something to happen or something to get. If that doesn't happen, that anger comes, you know, that's, that's the indication of that passion and lust within us. Okay. So that's, and if we think that, See, the more we are attached on certain result, on certain thing to happen, on certain, you know, uh, outcome, the more there is tendency, you know. So that is that is why, yeah, anger is something we have to as a, a divine quality, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, freedom from anger, renunciation is, you know, it's again, um, getting attached to Krishna is the object. It's not about forcing ourselves to be detached from material. No, as we get attached to Krishna, that is like a byproduct. Okay. So um, aversion to fault finding. Yes. So rather than, um, you know, uh, finding fault in others, we should direct more inwards. Try to see what fault, be a fault finder for self, you know, rather than others. Right. Compassion, that is a devotee quality, right. Compassionate, um, you know, freedom from covetousness, uh, gentleness, modesty, determination is again coming, you know, um, and when we talk about uh, cleanliness, cleanliness is just not outside, you know, it's also inside. And how can we be clean inside, you know, by our sadhana, right? Um, and um, actually cleanliness in purpose, we'll see it is mainly, um, you know, uh, directed to Vaishyas. The business class, yeah, um, because they tend to do business and tend to enter the black market and you know illegal means of earning money, you know. So that, you know, that is what is highlighted. They are prominently this character is for vicious, okay. So uh, not to deal with such wrong means of earning, uh, that cleanliness. So. Yeah, so overall, uh, these 26 qualifications are mentioned as divine nature of a person. And um, and yeah, once we hit all the lists, I think then it is a good, you know, it's like mode of goodness, right? And going above. Now further, now we enter into the Asura, right? That was Daivi Sampada, this is Asura, which is the demonic qualities described in the next section. Now we have to understand the divine qualities, developing the divine qualities leads us to liberation. But developing the demonic qualities leads us to bondage. 
the more we have demonic qualities, the more bonded we get in this material world, birth and death cycle. And that's why Prabhupada called it as, you know, the it lays a royal road for hell. It takes you to hell, developing these. Okay. So now uh, demonic qualities. So um, uh, Krishna has mentioned these uh, six uh, qualities here. Uh, pride, arrogance, conceit, you know, uh, anger, harshness, and ignorance. You know, conceit is self-possessed. Yeah. Thinking more about self. So these qualities belong to those of demonic nature or samakkata. Right. So pride, we have, yes, again, uh, we have discussed stories related to pride as well. Uh, how pride uh, comes before fall, that saying of English. Arrogance, yes. So anger, harshness, ignorance, these are just opposite qualities of divine. You can say it like that. Yeah? Uh, being very proud, you know. Uh, again, conceit is a level up. It is like excessive appreciation of self. You know, just self processed You will find some people in our life, you know, and who are like, uh, they are so busy talking about self, my child, my wife, my husband. So their world revolves you know, around that. They are very, you know, they are possessed to showcase and uh, it's like a show bottle, you know, overall. So, yes, the, the, so that is a, that is exactly the opposite of what divine qualities you would ask. Yeah. Now, um, now, um, in the purport, um, Prabhupada has mentioned in this verse, the royal road to hell is described. The more we develop these qualities, Surely we are on the road to hell. Yeah? The demonic wants to make a show of religion and advancement in spiritual science. And what Prabhupada has mentioned in the purport is that there are many people who showcase themselves as I'm God. You know, um, I have the powers. You know? It's like a show bottle business again. You know, they, they have a show off of that they are renunciates. They don't have any attachment to this world. But that's not the reality. They are not renunciate within, you know, within self, they're still attached, right? And that's what Prabhupada mentions in the purpose that uh, the demonic wants to make a show of religion and advancement in spiritual science, although they do not follow the principles, you know, they're always arrogant or proud and possessing some type of education or much wealth. They desire to be worshipped by others and demand respectability, although they do not command respect. Over trifles, they become very angry and speak harshly, not gently. They do not know what should be done and what should not be done. They do everything whimsically according to their own desire, and they do, do not recognize any authority. These demonic qualities are taken on by them from the beginning of their bodies in the womb of their mother, and as they grow, they manifest in all inauspicious qualities. So like we know, we our Next life is determined by our prior karma and desire, right? So based on that, what we deserve, we already are in the womb of you, right? So these are already, like for example, in Duryodhana's case, you know, when uh, he was about to be born, there were already many inauspicious signs which were happening. And Vidura, um, you know, he suggested Dhritarashtra that... Um, <clears throat> you know, um, give up the sun you know, because all the inauspicious signs were around. But of course, you know, that didn't happen, you know. So what happened was those inauspicious signs later on, we could see how the all the inauspicious qualities were, were in Dhruvyadana, which caused all the inauspiciousness around within Hastina, right? So, yes, um, so it is from the prior, you know, uh, as well. So then in the fifth, yeah, in the fifth verse, we put all of them, yeah. So now when we know that divine and demonic qualities, what is the destiny? Yeah. So Krishna uh, states the destiny or the results of such qualities in both. Yeah. Now, um, 16.5, so the transcendental qualities are conducive to liberation. Like I said, yeah. Whereas the demonic qualities make for bondage. Bondage means the repeated cycle of birth and death. 
and maybe even falling down further. That's the thing, you know. This life they might have a human life, but based on their activities, next life they might have an animal life, you know, and they go further the royal road to hell, you know. That's what. So now Arjuna, of course, when he heard about demonic qualities, you know, he would be thinking that I am here on this battlefield to fight people, to kill people. So isn't that also demonic in me? So he, you know, that question arises that, you know, where do I fall? Which category? So this shloka, Krishna clearly defines in the last statement of this shloka, do not worry, O son of Pandu, for you are born with the divine qualities. Yeah. So Krishna explains that much. So seeing Arjuna's lamentation did not go away, Krishna started sharing qualities of demonic people. Okay. So we need to understand here the importance of mind because we have been talking about mind a lot. The whole of sixth chapter we discussed about mind, right? Um, so we need to understand that mind can upgrade us or degrade us, right? It is our mind, which is, you know, the consciousness, which can let us upgrade into developing divine qualities or downgrade us developing demonic qualities. You know, when we see, when we perform our sadhana, why do we say mantra, right? Mantra. Man is mind, tra, which controls, that controls. So mantra is that controls the mind. And that's why, how can we develop divine qualities? By continuing our sadhana, by mantra, right? And by having prashad, because the most difficult sense out of all senses is our tongue. Okay, so Prasad, uh, you know, Krishna Prasad controls that tongue. So overall, sadhana helps us to increase our divine qualities. You know, so these don't come, see, these wouldn't come overnight. We have to understand that. Just when we read something, when we hear that 10 times, we cannot think that it will, it will come in us. No, these, these are not the tendency to have something like a quick fix. Everything nowadays is two minutes, two minutes Maggie, you know, two minutes this, the delivery, no. But th this is, we are talking about spiritual science, you know. So they don't come overnight. It's like, uh, you know, the first grade student will be able to do the complex sums of 10th grade as the first grade will continue practice and reach that level until 10th grade, you know, hiring its level. It cannot, we cannot expect that the first grade heard about the 10th grade sums, you know, kept hearing for a month and then it will come. No, it doesn't happen. Right. So we need to have main thing is patience, tolerance, you know, that's the key thing and strong determination. Okay. To keep practicing so that we can reach to that level of divine qualities. Yeah. Now, with that, um, further, um, yes. 7th and 8th and ninth shloka. We'll do it together. Um, so this is in continuation to demonic qualities. Yeah. So uh, maybe I'll... Um, Biswa Prabhuji, can you read the, these three? Yeah, Hare Krishna. Okay. Demoniac qualities, Bhagavad Gita 16.7. Those who are demoniac don't, do not know what is to be done. And what is not to be done? Neither cleanliness nor proper behavior nor truth is found in them. Bhagavad Gita 16.8 They say that this world is unreal with no foundation, no God in control. They say it produced of sex desire and has no cause other than lost. Bhagavad Gita 16.9, following such conclusions, the demoniac who are lost to themselves and who have no intelligence engage in unbeneficial, horrible works mean to destroy the world. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. See, I'll just uh, give a gist of these three. Yeah? So Arjuna said that in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, how can I fight with my relatives? Right? That was the mindset of Arjuna. Okay? But Duryodhana, he never thought it that way. That's why we have given two pictures here. Left side Duryodhana and then Arjuna. 
you know, you can compare these two qualities with these two personalities because this is in, also in context with Bhagavad Gita, right? Duryodhana never thought that way. You know, although he saw everybody assembled in the battlefield, all were his relatives, but he did not feel even a tinge of that because he was so self-centered. He was not clean. You know, that cleanliness is of thought. Yeah, Duryodhana was highly am ambitious. He was so selfish that even when, when Krishna came and he requested that just give five villages to Pandavas, he was so ambitious that he didn't want to do that also. You know, while on the other side, um, you will see that Pandavas were so generous. You know, they were so clean that they were even happy with five villages. You know, even the conduct wise, you know, uh, Duryodhana was so arrogant, impolite, even to his elders. You know, he, he didn't. Whereas Pandavas was the opposite, right? Now, in eighth shloka here, um, we see that there is there are people who say that there is no God in control. Yeah, We saw such people, uh, Krishna mentioned in seventh chapter. If you remember, there were four classes of people who Krishna said they will surrender to. Artho, Artharto, Gyani, Chitnas. And then Krishna also mentioned four kind of people who will never surrender. You know, those were, uh, he termed them as Muda, so grossly foolish, uh, lowest among mankind, uh, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and the fourth were atheistic. You know, and these are the class of people who think there is no God. Okay, they can never surrender, and Krishna has mentioned that. Right? They think that this world is actually unreal. You know, uh, sorry, it's real. You know, they don't understand that this world is unreal and it is temporary. That's not their understanding. They deny the existence of God. Because what do they do? Why do they deny existence of God? Because they want to control on the matter. And they don't want to accept that there is somebody else who can control the matter other than them. You know, they are envious of Krishna, demonic character. And we'll see that. Krishna also mentions that later. You know, um, but because they, um, yeah, because they don't believe in God, what do they end up in? Ninth shloka. They end up in doing all the horrible works, you know, like animal killing. What is happening, you know, with this atomic weapons, nuclear weapons? You know, we see in our history in the world that how some leaders, uh, they got into so much destruction. Why? Because they wanted to establish their control. Right? That's the thought process of demonic. They want just destruction because they want themselves to control the matter. They don't think there is any supreme power behind anything. That's their thought process. Okay. Now, just comparing this with um, you know, Parashara Muni. Who is Parashara Muni? He's Yes, exactly. Thank you. So Vedavyas, you know, um, his father, right? So he told that there are three things that molds the destiny of a person. This might be interesting for us, you know. Those three things are birth, planetary influence, which we call it Jyotish, right? And the third is, you know, the association. And when he listed these three, you know, um, I know, of course, nowadays, this planetary influence Jyotish thing is a big business, big short business. Whereas actually, as per Vedas, it is not something which you should be referring every now and then. It's only, you know, at certain important time points, you know. But now it is like, it's, it's yeah, um, it's actually Vedas, like we know, they are huge. And one of the branch of Vedas is Jyotish, you know, sub-branch, yeah. And nothing, it is nothing but actually study of time. How time, certain time period impacts, you know, the person. But but what the baseline here is, out of these three, Parashara Muni says that the one which plays most important role to determine what kind of a person can be. Can somebody tell me what is the most important role which can play on determining a person? among these three. Association. Yes, exactly. Association. 
And um, I want to share one very beautiful thing from Radha Govind uh, Maharaj. You know, uh, it's really amazing, you know, and this shows the power of association. Uh, I would like one of you to read it. Maybe Hare Krishna Prabhuji, can you read it? Yeah, yes, Mataji. If a drop of water falls on burning metal, it immediately vaporizes into air. If it falls in the mouth of a snake, it turns into poison. If it falls on the leaf of a lotus flower, it starts shining brilliantly. And if it falls within a shell near the ocean, it turns into pearl. All this is not due to the drop of water. It is merely a matter of where it falls. Human life is also like this. Whom, whomsoever a human being associates with, he obtains their qualities within himself. Therefore, we must always associate with devotees. Shri Srimad Radha Govinda Das Goswami Maharaj Prahalad the Charita Charita Charitra Kata. Thank you. Thank you. This is a quoting from Radha Govinda Maharaj actually. That, and it's so beautiful and so strong that See, it's the same raindrop, but in association with a shell, it becomes a pearl. And when the same raindrop falls into on earth, it becomes mud. There's such a vast difference, right? Value of that shell versus value of mud. You can think. So association can have such high influence of what happens to us, you know? And that's why uh, we can correlate also with this example that what do you see here? So there are uh, three people here, right? Um, I just want to introduce the concept of that association can be of two types, active association and passive association. In here, say uh, the first person is a smoker, yeah? He's smoking. Who is actively associating with him? Can anybody guess the second or the third? The second guy. Actively. Active the person who is smoking itself. Yeah, smoking. And who is the other active association here? The person who is drinking. Right? Yeah. So, and who is the passive association here? Who is not actively doing it? but still is an association, is a passive association. Middle guy, middle guy. Middle guy, right? So we have to understand that does passive association also harm? There are some times when we think that, okay, this person, we go into somewhere and we come across certain people who are doing, you know, the wrong acts. And we think that I am not doing it. So I'll not get influenced. No, that's what here, you know, we are trying to say that, Passive association, does it harm? Yes, it does. You know, for example, here in this um, picture, even though the middle person is not smoking, but will the middle person also get impacted because of the smoke coming out of that cigarette? Yes, he will also get harmed. You know, he's. this is called as passive smoking. This is our scientific terminology, right? So active smoking and passive. Passive are the ones which are inhaling that active smoke, right? But they are not smoking themselves, but they are also impacted. Similarly, sometimes we interact with things, thinking it is normal to do, you know, and we associate with people because they create a, but, you know, thinking that it will not impact, but actually they do create an impression on us. They have an impact on us. You know, the mindset starts building, this is okay. You know, from no, it is not okay. It starts slowly with such association being, it's okay. And then slowly we see that there is further downfall. That once in a while is okay. You know, once in a while is not okay. Then we eventually there is a fall. You know, it is very important. Association is very important for us. You know, I was reading some facts the other day and I came, you know, um, there was something very surprising to me that People who read, who spend hours together reading newspaper and, um, you know, the um, 
the threats and everything, all the illegal stuff happening around, you know, some people want to keep themselves very up to date, right? People who read more of that, spending more time on WhatsApp and newspaper, they have been analyzed to be under heavily, you know, stressed and under depression. Why? Because they are associating. So even though they are not doing it, but they have the mind going on only with those things because they are around, right? Those things. So, um, so association either makes us or breaks us. And the beauty of Bhagavad Gita is if we same relate from newspaper to Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita is giving us the association of the greatest teacher, which is Krishna, and greatest student, which is Arjuna, so that we can develop those qualities. You know? What we experience in our life is because of the kind of association we have in our past life also. But you know, our future life will depend on what kind of association we have today. Okay, so that is the key. When we talk about divine and demonic, association is the key for us to go this way or that. Yeah. Okay, so not taking much time there. Um, moving to the third section of today, which is activities of demonic people and the consequences. Now we will go pretty... Um, quick here. Now, what Krishna is here from here on, I'm explaining until the 10 to 20 shloka is, you know, what are the tendencies of such demonic people? How do they conduct? What is their attitude? And what is their result? The result is they go to hell, right? We, and that's what Krishna is going to say again. Yeah? So, demonic tendency and conduct. So, um, maybe uh, Kavya Mataji, can you read this? Uh, yes, Mataji. Demonic tendencies and conduct. Bhagavad Gita 16.10. Tendency and conduct. Taking shelter of insatiable lust. Kamam Ashriya Duspuram. And absorbed in the conceit of pride and false prestige. The demoniac, thus illusioned, are always worn to unclean work. Suchi Vrata. Attracted by impermanent. Bhagavad Gita 16.10 purport. The demons have no satiation for this lust. They will go on increasing and increasing their insatiable desires for material enjoyment. Although they are always full of anxieties on account of accepting non-permanent things, they still continue to engage in such activities out of illusion. They have no knowledge and cannot tell that they are heading the wrong way. Accepting non-permanent things such as demoniac people create their own God, create their own hymns and chant accordingly. The result is that they become more and more attracted to two things, sex enjoyment and accumulation of material wealth. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So what is the tendency of these people? They want more and more. Now, why they want more and more? Because they think this place is permanent. Their power is going to be permanent. You know, their opulence is going to be permanent. They are in that illusion. Okay. And that's why in order to have that more and more mentality, you know, they end up doing unclean work. Okay. Not something which is legalized. Illegal means. Yeah. Because why? Because they are attracted to that fame, name, you know, that which makes them more pride also yeah so all the demonic qualities kick in as you can see you know with with that more attachment towards these temporary things all the demonic qualities like pride anger lust everything is coming you know so that's the tendency yeah and their conduct now moving further how, what's their attitude and occupation yeah this is also oops, this is also very important um and Ramaprabhu Mataji, can you read this? Demonic attitude and occupation. 16.11, attitude. They believe that to gratify the senses is the prime necessity. Kamopa Boga Parama of human civilization. Thus, until the end of life, Pralayantam, their anxiety is Im immeasurable. 
சிந்தாம் அபரிமேயம் மேயம் 16.12 occupation bound by a network of hundreds of thousands of desires and absorbed in lust and anger kama krodha parayana they secure money by illegal means for sense gratification anyayanetha sanchayam sanchayan thank you thank you so see their attitude is like eat drink and enjoy you know um so to gratify their senses see until end of their life they will be in anxiety i want more that chintam aparimeyam you know they are always in chinta in in that anxiety you know in purport uh, i don't know if this is it is this shloka or the next prabhupada has mentioned you know there was a person um a millionaire uh, who was about to die yeah? uh, he was informed by the doctor that he is going to die and he requests can i just have you know four more months or four more years i don't remember but can i have four more uh, two more years or something because i have certain uh, you know uh, targets to achieve you know in business so the per- such a person even until the death bed they will be only thinking how can i expect you know they don't realize that what you have been working for for so long it's actually temporary are you going to take it along with you no you know so um, and because of that kind of that develops the greediness you know and then they because of to address that greed and uh, to address that uh, status of them what they maintain in the society to maintain that they take the illegal means you know because you know that builds the pressure in them if they don't hit that how will people see him see them in that way the society will you know put them down so all these pressures are ongoing you know why because they want people to see them to honor them you know and that's why prabhupada says um, in uh, several times that a devotee should not you know expect that kind of people in the society to look them with that that same thing you know uh, with honor you know uh, otherwise that if we expect something from others to uh for us then that will lead us to drive start doing these demonic qualities ending yeah so yeah and the attitude um yeah in 11th and 12th purport the demonic expect accept that the enjoyment of senses is the ultimate goal of life and this concept they maintain until death they do not believe in life after that they do not believe that one takes on different types of bodies according to one karma activities in this world their plans for life are never finished and they go on preparing plan after plan all of which are never finished yeah here it is we have a personal experience of a person of such demoniac mentality who even at the point of death was requesting the physician to prolong his life for four years more because his plans were not yet complete such foolish people do not know that a physician cannot prolong life even for a moment when the notice is there there is no consideration of man's desire the law of nature does not allow a second beyond what one is destined to reach yeah so so yeah okay and then thoughts upon gaining wealth what do they think you know um like duryodhana again you know 13 to 15 says that they do wrong things consistently adharma but they never feel they have done anything wrong you know that's the duryodhana mentality the demonic you know they never think i have done something the demonic person thinks so much wealth do i have today and i will gain more according to my schemes so much is mine now and it will increase in future more and more he is my enemy i have killed him you know people around if there are competitors if there are somebody who is not giving them that kind of respect they think them as their enemy you know um so and my other enemies will also be killed and then uh, the translation says i am the lord of everything they think that yeah that i am the lord of everything i am the enjoyer i am perfect powerful happy i am the richest man surrounded by aristocratic relatives there is none so powerful and happy as i am i shall perform sacrifices i shall give some charity and thus i can rejoice in this way such persons are deluded by ignorance 
So I told you, charity is also in goodness, passion, ignorance. So this is the kind of charity. You know, we'll see further how people who are in passionate, you know, who are in passion, mode of passion and ignorance, they do charity for show purpose, you know, or for self care you know, not with a clean mind, you know. So that's that's the difference, okay. So destination of pe such people who think demonic people is the next verse. Where do they go? You know, they go to hell. Yeah. Um, and 16th, 17th, 18th verse. Veshma Mataji, can you read this? You are now uh, on mute, Mataji, if you're trying. Okay, for now, maybe I'll go ahead with it. Um, so 16th verse, thus perplexed by various anxieties and bound by network of illusion, they become too strongly attached to sense enjoyment and fall down to hell. 17th, Self-complacent and always impudent, deluded by wealth and false prestige. They sometimes proudly perform sacrifice in namesake only, yeah, without following any rules or regulations. Bewildered by false ego, strength, pride, lust, anger, the demons become envious of supreme personality of God, who is situated in their own bodies and in the bodies of others and blaspheme against the real world. They are envious of Krishna. You know, why? Because they don't want to hear there is anybody more powerful than them, that they don't have control over their own life. You know? They live a, actually these kind of people, they live a hellish life here also and later also in their life. You know? Because here also, you see, they never have a kind of peacefulness with them. You know, their mind is always anxious, always in competitive thing, you know. So they, because they don't believe in transmigration, they don't believe that after this uh, life, you know, based on my activities, I'll get into another life. They don't believe that, you know. Uh, in the purport, yeah, uh, Prabhupada has mentioned, such people are like Ravana thinking. Ravana wanted to build a staircase from here to heavenly planets so that people can easily go up. You know, such is the mentality of such people. They don't want to do good and deserve that. They want to snatch. They want to control over it. That's the thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Now, what is the um, treatment of Krishna um, for such demonic people? Um, I'll come back to uh, Biswa Prabhuji. Can you read it? Yes, Mataji. The Krishna's treatment of demoniac people, 16.19, those who are envious and mischievous, who are the lowest among men, I perpetually cast, cast into the ocean of material existence into various demoniac species of life. 16.20, attaining repeated birth amongst the species of demoniac life, O son of Kunti, such person can never approach me. Gradually, they sink down to the most abominable types of existence. There is no, there is no limit to how one can rise and there is no limit to how low one can fall. The choice is ours in which directions we want to go. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. See, birth after birth, Krishna is saying they're envious to me and they're mischievous kids of mine. You know, so he, you know, he says that they, they are, you know, he, he purposely sent, you know, they are, they always take birth and death. They will be in demonic species. You know, um, and all people, even though they have high living, very wealthy, high society, cars, bungalows, you know, um, 
we have to understand that with all these amenities, um, they are actually of no value. You know, if they are not, at the end of the day, if a person, even after having all of these, uh, but is not Krishna conscious, it's Krishna conscious, then there is no value. You know? As they will fall eventually in the category of demons. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't have all these and you're Krishna conscious, you'll upgrade into divine qualities. Yeah? So we have to be very careful and have clear understanding. You know? The more we earn and have high opulence and crave for that, that means we are leading more into the demonic qualities. Yeah? So we have to lead our life such that we achieve our ultimate goal. You know? Because Krishna says clearly here, such people, they can never approach him. You know, they can never. So we, we don't want to be in that for sure. Okay, with that, we come to the last section of today, um, which is last three shlokas, um, giving up the demonic tendencies and following scriptures. Now, there are many times a question which comes up, you know, that if God is good and we are all his children, then why is there evil in this world? Right? Because the whole of this chapter is focusing on divine and demonic. If God is there, why are there demonic persons? You know? Does that mean that you know um, Krishna is unkind at heart to categorize some people into demonic? You know? um, actually, we have to understand very clearly the concept because this question always came to my mind. You know um, that these bad qualities are nothing but Absence of good qualities. Okay. So it's not extraordinarily made. It's like absence of something like brightness and darkness. Darkness is what? Absence of light. Right? If we are in, if we are in knowledge, if we have that brightness, then there will not be any darkness. Right? It is similar to, uh, we have just tried to explain this. Say we have sun, yeah. Uh, if we are <clears throat> facing the sun, yeah, that means we have that uh, divine, yeah. But the other is, it's like anmukha and vimukha. Vimukha is turning our, showing our back and turning our face opposite to sun, right? Showing our back to sun, yeah. That is demonic, right? When we turn away from Krishna, these qualities come when we are vimukha, right? But if we are turning towards Krishna, you know, then all the good qualities, you know, they stop. You know? So we need to become very transparent medium. You know? And this chapter makes us to start think that, you know, let me stop to my best extent, start stopping the demonic qualities in myself. You know? And what should people do to stop that? Make your sadhana better. You know? the, and what Krishna says, you know, also in the next shloka, which is very important shloka, uh, that what can they do? What can people do to be protected by these, by the demonic qualities? What can they do? Three things, Krishna says. Yeah, very important. Three gates to hell. If you protect yourself from this, then you will be protecting from the demonic qualities. So, three vidham narakasyedam dvaram nashanam atmanaha kamaha krodas tata lobhas tasmad etat trayam trajet. So, kamaha krodas lobhas. Kamaha lust, krodaha anger, lob, greed. Okay? This is the gate to hell, lag, lust, anger, greed. Yeah. So they there are three gates leading to this hell: lust, anger, greed. Every sane man should give these up, for they lead to degradation of the soul. So, in order to avoid the demonic qualities, we should be careful from these three things. The more a person is freed from these three things, the more the person becomes purer. And closer to Krishna. 
okay and we learned in second chapter how the whole thing starts with what shloka i think it is 62 and 63 dhyaya uh, dhyaya to vishayan pun um, sangasteshu pajayate sanga sanjayate kamah kamah krodha vijayate yeah then krodha bhavati sammoha sammoha smriti vidhana so the whole series is mentioned there all starts with dhyayatu that is contemplation as soon as we see something advertisement someone having a new phone a new technological stuff you know a new hi fi laptop you know it's our you know mind which contemplates on that sense of things and that continuous contemplation thinking of that develops an attachment you know and that attachment when it increases it results into lust and these three gates to hell are situated here if this lust is fulfilled you know if you get something which you are wishing for then that develops greed and if the lust is unfulfilled you get anger okay so these are like a triangle you know so lust is the greatest enemy we learned in the third chapter krishna said clearly the greatest enemy is within which is lust and it is this lust because of which the by products are anger and greed which are the gates to hell okay so this is the whole uh, thing we have to you know one cannot escape these three gates without scriptural injunctions without studying bhagavad gita bhagavat without hearing about krishna no you know only way to get rid of these three gates to hell is to follow you know devotional service okay now with that we end up you know go into the yeah uh, the first thing is the exposure to sense objects so that's why it's very important we prevent ourselves with such environment otherwise even that passive exposure can become active which leads to lust okay so with that we come to the last uh, yeah a part of today last locus so result of dis- disregarding and following scripture so for, for people these demonic people they don't they work on their own they will act whimsically they do not follow scriptures so 23rd shloka krishna says he who discards scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection nor happiness nor supreme destination they actually don't achieve anything and 24th one should therefore understand what is duty and what is not duty by the regulation of scriptures knowing such rules and regulations one should act so that he may gradually be elevated yeah if one does not follow them and acts whimsically according to lust anger greed desire then he will never be able to get perfection happiness no satisfaction yeah so in other words you know a man may theoretically know these things but if he does not apply them on a day to day life then he is to be known as the lowest of mankind just knowing yes it is better than not knowing but just knowing reading gita is not enough unless you don't apply the application should be there on the instructions which is coming from krishna you know and that's what this whole overall this chapter is saying that people who whose faith is based on scriptures they are de- divine and who do not follow scriptures they are demonic and they will never go back to krishna that's what krishna says okay so overall this chapter uh, some of the key quick summary uh, some lessons um, so we learn two kind of people divine and demonic and a detailed characters you know about divine and also about demonic yeah and there are possibility for us to go up developing divine qualities or down developing the demonic yeah and what can determine this the key thing is association you know association transforms us either to go up or to down that is the key for us to change and then the other thing i think lessons learned is obedience always pays you know obedience protects us 
obedience to scriptures god's instructions yeah we can then develop divine qualities yeah which can enable us to come out of this prison yeah so and how can we protect ourselves from demo developing demonic qualities by protecting ourselves from the three gates of hell you know lust anger and greed this will save us from the illusion okay so that with that we conclude um to 16th chapter